have some stories for you that I'm really excited about. Charles Martinet finally really gives us an idea of what his new role is at Nintendo or what it isn't. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. We're going to hear from the man himself in terms of becoming a Mario ambassador. We also have some news on the next Nintendo Direct and some expectations of when we're going to get some stuff leaked for it. That's right. Some actual information leaked for this Direct that is going to be crazy. Oh, we're not done yet because we have the launch of a brand new game today and Nintendo announcing a bunch of holiday bundles for Nintendo Switch which appear to possibly be an inventory sellout sale. We'll talk about that as well as Nintendo's probably preparing for the launch of their next system. That being said, folks, we are on a road to 150,000 subscribers, so I'd appreciate it if you would drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell so you get notified of all future uploads. This is Prime News dropping at 3 p.m. Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Central. What are we waiting for? Let's just dive right in. <laughs> now our first story deals with Charles Martinet, the f now former voice of Mario and gang at Nintendo, who has, well, been sort of retired, as it were, into a new role as Mario Ambassador, as announced by Nintendo a little over a couple of weeks ago. But here is the thing, we haven't really heard from Charles Martinet himself outside of a tweet that he put up showing that he's excited about his new role. Well, he did an interview more recently, and well, here's what he had to say. And so I am now, you might have seen the news, I'm a Mario Ambassador. I don't know what that is yet. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not retired, as, as it were, as I don't know how, but I, I'm an ambassador. And as we step forward into the future, I will learn, we'll all learn what exactly that is. But in the meantime, you know, I'll be ambassadoring as I always, I, I'm always an ambassador at, uh, of Nintendo and Mario at all of these events because I, I just cherish every moment of it and I, and I hope that, you know, your love of the game continues and grows the way mine does. So, thank you so much. Let's ask a couple of questions. Go ahead. Ask me. But don't ask me about the ambassadorship or every time we I don't know anything about it. But don't ask me about the movie because I haven't seen it yet. Don't tell me what happens. Yeah, that's right. He doesn't even know what the Mario Ambassador role is. Just that he now is one. And he's not retired. He doesn't really seem that upset by this, by the way. So for those wondering if he has some ill will towards Nintendo, that doesn't really appear to be the case because it's something he knew was coming. But it is interesting that he doesn't really know what his role is anymore. And he clearly isn't retired. Certainly does sound like it wasn't his choice to step down. But Nintendo's, and it is Nintendo's right, and that the ambassador role is more of a quiet severance package of sorts to keep paying him for his services already rendered. Now look, I don't know, obviously, all the particulars behind the scenes, and Charles Martinet's not going to get into it. He's been under an NDA for decades, so like, we're not going to get those sort of nitty-gritty details, but he did you know, kindly ask, hey, can you not ask me about this thing? Because I don't even know what this thing is, which is very weird. So it's, it's now his job? Yeah, let's just put it this way. Nintendo wanted to move on from Charles Martinet and do their own thing. And Charles Martinet, you know, they didn't want to disrespect his legendary role and his legendary career. So they created and invented a brand new role for him, which doesn't really serve much of a purpose other than, hey, Charles, just keep being Charles and keep going to cons and do what you are going to do even without us. Except you could use Nintendo official branding behind your name. Yeah, I don't know. It is what it is. Look, we've already sort of talked to death this whole moving on from Charles Martinet stuff, but I just wanted to give this update to it because this is the first time we've actually heard from Charles himself on this new role and what he's doing moving forward. Now our next story, and probably one of the most exciting ones in today's news, is about the next Nintendo Direct because folks, we finally have a good idea of when it's going to happen and when we can actually expect any possible legit leaks for it to happen because there's a pattern popping up with a certain leaker with a 100% track record who doesn't give a lot of lead up for Nintendo Directs. What are we talking about? Well, first let's get into how we know when this Nintendo Direct is happening this month. And we have a new report coming from Necro Felipe Lima over at Nintendo Universo. 
Now, you might not be able to read this report, but essentially what he is saying is that a Nintendo Direct is next week between the 11th and the 15th. Of course, with nothing announced yet for this week, that really left next week as the most likely week of a Direct in September. Then again, there have been Directs the same week as Tokyo Game Show, twice and yeah tokyo game show is not for a couple of weeks so it wasn't a 100 percent for sure thing that this was happening next week now necro felipe lima with his reports on when directs are going to happen and direct weeks has been very very accurate so it's pretty much a for sure thing although because we can't verify any of this we should treat this as a rumor at this point now of note there are many rumors swirling around a possible state of play as well which is sony's version of a direct next week and you know what last year nintendo and sony actually did their events on the exact same day so we could get both next week and they could both be on the same day it is what it is sony and nintendo don't really seem to care if they overshadow each other now i said that we would have an idea of when we could expect leaks for this direct you know legit leaks from you know so well we call them legit leaks it's more like rumors from somebody who's really really good at this stuff and we're talking about pioro over on twitter because he has a 100 percent track record right now with his nintendo leaks and here's the thing every time he leaks stuff for directs he always does it about two days before a nintendo direct happens so it is widely expected that next week monday we'll be dropping a video for you guys with a bunch of fresh nintendo direct leaks including all of the big announcements in the thing so if you don't want the direct to be spoiled you can maybe skip that video if you don't care because all nintendo directs are are giant marketing events anyways which is you know what I, you know, that's sort of what these videos do right we advertise nintendo basically hey you know what that's when we can expect some stuff. So expect a lot of stuff next week. Also expect us to be doing a lot of speculation and a lot of wishful thinking and a lot of predictions for this Direct. Now that we have a good idea on what it's happening, we'll be having some predictions on this week's podcast featuring Jake Randall. Andres restarts back off his vacation. We got Flam coming on. It's going to be a killer podcast. And we have a lot to talk about. There's been a lot of Nintendo Switch 2 stuff floating around there. And yeah, Nintendo Direct time. So you know what? This is one of my favorite times of the year, and I'm super excited for you guys to join me on this journey. Now look, we are creeping closer and closer and closer to the holiday season. And as we do, Nintendo has to announce some holiday bundles. And you know what, folks? It's a holiday tradition at this point. The Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Bundle is coming back with a standard edition Switch, but a brand new fresh looking box. So there you have it. Nintendo's bundles, we're done. Oh, actually, no. Nintendo announced some Switch Lite bundles for Animal Crossing New Horizons as well with the teal and pink, and they're even putting some leafs and patterns on the back of it as well. Now, it is being widely talked about in many sectors, from RGT85, a fellow YouTuber, to the Twitterverse, to, well, Xverse, I don't know, all the way out to Reddit and many forums out there and several internet communities that maybe Nintendo is trying to clear out stock for a certain announced new platform, well, hopefully announced new platform early 2024 to release next summer. Of course, we're talking about the code name. I don't even know what, it's just a made up moniker at this point, Nintendo Switch 2. That probably won't be the name of the system. Either way, the point is that a lot of people think Nintendo's gearing up for that. And now they have multiple bundles out for the holidays that clear out Switch lights and clear out original Nintendo Switches. And they'll probably just keep producing Switch OLEDs for a little while. At least that's what some people are assuming. It, by the way, this is also a really good deal. Animal Crossing New Horizons bundled in at $1.99 on, you know, basically a Nintendo Switch Lite is a killer deal in the first place. Now, I know Animal Crossing New Horizons isn't really a mega seller for Nintendo, so bundling this game in also could make some sense. And when I say it's not a mega seller, I'm talking about month over month. I know how much this thing, so like 30, 40 million, one of the biggest best-selling games in Switch history, but it's not consistently in the top 10 sales anymore week over week, so... Stop yelling at me. That being said, folks, I think we need to get into our final story, and that is Rune Factory 3 has now launched on Nintendo Switch. That's right, Rune Factory 3 is back, everyone. So you know what? Here's a fresh trailer as we look into what they have done different with this game, bringing back a DS classic. <laughs> 
Rune Factory 3 Special returns after more than a decade following its original release on the Nintendo DS. The remastered version of the popular entry in Rune Factory series is being developed with gorgeous HD graphics and redesigned 3D character models that improve upon the original designs while retaining their unique appeal. These updated visuals are bolstered by new features including newlywed mode, standalone adventures unlocked after marriage to each of the game's eligible bachelorettes, and a hell difficulty level to challenge even veteran players. Some of the key features include restoring the balance between two worlds, step into the shoes of Micah, a young man with amnesia, and the mysterious ability to transform into a woolly as he searches for a way for humans and monsters to coexist. There's time-tested RPG action and adventures await you with mastery magic, swords, spears, hammers, and more to take on powerful monsters. Recruit townsfolk and monsters alike to explore treacherous dungeons. Sow the seeds of your new life by taking a break from adventuring with activities like farming, fishing, and more. Discover the many varieties of magic seeds which grow into strange crops that aid in Micah's adventure in exciting ways. Find that special someone because you can meet 11 lovely bachelorettes the most in series history. Woo! Learn more about them through daily interactions, fall in love, and then pop the question and get married. Before Micah knows it, he'll have a wonderful family to join him in his adventures. Folks, it is Rune Factory, baby. I love this series. It is one of my favorite series. You farming sim RPG addicts out there, this game always brings the goods, and now you can get married and enjoy the family life while you're adventuring out in the world. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, everyone. I am Nathaniel Rufflejance from Nintendo Prime. This has been your episode of Prime News, and I'll catch you in the next video.